Hello friends, and welcome back to another episode of Homemaking and History, the series where I take you along with me during a typical day of homemaking and tell you about a historical female figure. This is only episode two, and today we are going to be talking about one of my favorite historical female figures, and that is Alva Vanderbilt Belmont. Alva Smith, as she was then known, was born on January 17, 1853 at 201 Government Street in Mobile, Alabama to a commission merchant by the name of Murray Forbes Smith. Alva was one of seven children and her family frequently took trips all the way from Mobile, Alabama to Newport, Rhode Island for summer vacations. It was, however, in 1859 that the Smiths left Mobile, Alabama and relocated permanently to New York City. After Alva moved to New York City, she became best friends with a woman named Consuelo, whose last name I cannot pronounce, but she did become the future Duchess of Manchester. It was through her best friend Consuelo that she met William Vanderbilt, the grandson of Cornelius Vanderbilt, one of the elite families in New York high society at the time. On April 20th, 1875, Alva and William were married at Calvary Church in New York City, and they quickly had three children. Their firstborn, Consuelo Vanderbilt, named after her best friend, William Vanderbilt II, and Harold Sterling Vanderbilt. Alva was a rising star in New York society, but she did not come from an old money family, nor were the Vanderbilts an old money family at the time, and high society New York could be quite snobbish. Alva was determined to bring the Vanderbilt family name the social status that she felt it deserved. Alva and her husband started their social climbing with a bang, building a chateau-inspired mansion on 5th Avenue, on the corner of 5th Avenue and 57th, overlooking 58th, and taking up an entire city block in New York City. When the mansion was completed, she decided she was going to host a ball. Not just any ball, but an elaborate costume party ball, which, if you factor in inflation today, she spent over $5 million on. But here's the thing, New York high society was very snobbish, like I mentioned before, so Alva decided not to invite Caroline Astor, who was the queen and head queen bee of all of New York high society at the time, and who was snubbing Alva. Caroline Astor's daughter was so disappointed that she did not get an invite to the costume ball that Caroline was forced to go and meet Alva and give her her blessing. Many of Alva's contemporaries at the time felt that she was very hacky. She liked to spend her money. And I mean, who could really blame her? Her husband had a lot of... I have had the pleasure of touring Alva's Newport, Rhode Island mansion several times. And her mansion is called Marble House. And I do have to agree, she loved to spend lavishly. Each and every run of the rooms in that mansion is themed to some degree. Alva was a go-getter and she was headstrong and she never took no for an answer. So in 1895, she shocked the world when she announced that she was divorcing her husband who was having an affair on her. Divorces were still very rare back then, but Alva did not care. She took no crap from you. She divorced William Vanderbilt, received $10 million in assets, as well as several estates, and she owned the Marble House Mansion outright in her own name. Only a year later, on January 11th, 1896, Alva remarried to one of her ex-husband's former best friends, Oliver Hazard Perry Belmont who happened to have a house just a few doors down from Alva's marble house. Alva went on to be a patron of the women's suffrage movement over in the UK and in the United States. She was outspoken and had a big personality. In 1932, Alva suffered a stroke that left her partially paralyzed. Alva passed away in Paris in 1933. She is buried at Woodlawn Cemetery in the Bronx, New York. Alva Vanderbilt Belmont was a very interesting woman, and I highly recommend you read the book A Well-Behaved Woman by Teresa Ann Fowler. Next time, we will be talking about Alva's daughter, Consuelo.